in this 109 page ruling to look at page 33 in fact it was from page 12 all the way to page 36 or about addressing the matter of jurisdiction essentially making the point that to the extent that there was disagreement on the matter of interpretation of article 97 1 g and h then the supreme court's jurisdiction was properly invoked why do you say otherwise well, uh, i'll start off with the lawyer um, oh okay Quick one. the jurisdiction what do i say yes look uh the matter of jurisdiction uh, let's just repeat this i keep telling you that um or making the submission that in law, if the Supreme Court wants to find jurisdiction, it's easy to find. In the same way, if they want to decline, it's easy to do. So let's set a, a bit of the uh, parameters so mm -hmm. that we understand. I always say that let's remember, just like, and it's good, we can relate to the Bible. You see the way the provision in Micah, the one about tithes, mm -hmm. you see how some... Uh, Pastors will interpret it to mean that you must bring 10% of your income every month to the church. Other pastors will say no. It just means that give what you can give. That's the same way the constitution is. We have so many rules, okay? There is the ideal one, but you will never get lawyers to agree. So what we we'll call ideal, purposive interpretation, even that one, a court can set out to say I'm doing purposive interpretation. Mm -hmm. And yet... What is actually happening is not purposive. So all I'm saying is that our idiosyncrasies, ideological positions, uh, prejudices, everything of a judge is also reflected in judgments. You may not see. The judge will not say, my ideological view is this, this, or my philosophical view is this, this. So it's affecting the judgment. No. But they all do. So the jurisdiction matter, I mean, I always said it from day one that bottom line is that it's the Supreme Court that has the power. So if they want to find jurisdiction, they say, yes, there's jurisdiction. Because mm -hmm. I ask Bobby, we go there, sometimes you couch your case, thinking that, yes, you've created a jurisdictional matter for them. They'll look at it and say, no, they don't think so. That's their opinion. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that it's not a, 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 this, a straight jacket. It's, it's fluid. It's subject to everybody's interpretation. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they say they have jurisdiction, I don't believe so. Look. What we are struggling, I, so I don't agree with the Supreme Court that there is jurisdiction. Why is that? But I agree mm -hmm. that because we belong to different schools of thought, they have the right to what? Uh, disagree, and they can hold a different opinion. And that's why I say that. So in all of this, the real understanding of what mm -hmm. is going on is you look at how they are appointed. This is the very reason for which they are appointed. A, a president looks at the various judges, and he will choose those who think like him, those who support his viewpoints, those who reason like him, then we say what? The same philosophies, the same juris jurisprudential uh, viewpoints, the same mm -hmm. ideologies. That's what they do. So he's choosing people who reflect his thought. So don't be surprised decisions like this go in the favor of the ruling government. And it's not only MPP that does it, NDC too. Some judges here, when you are in office, you choose your friends. Like to, to go to the Supreme Court, then you say, oh, no, it's the ideology, it's the jurisprudence. Yes, you want similarity in jurisprudence. That's what we mean by friendship. So this matter, all I'm saying is that there is no right or wrong answer. No, there is no right or wrong answer. But ultimately, it's all about the one who has the power. And the one who has the power is the Supreme Court. And they say they see jurisdictional, a jurisdictional issue. I don't see it. It's a ruse. Listen. The reason I disagree is that the purposive interpretation that you hear the lead uh, opinion, just as mm -hmm. uh, Asari Daku himself invokes. Yes. One of the cardinal principles of the purposive interpretation rule, the starting point is that mm -hmm. take the words, okay, give them their ordinary meaning in yes. the context. Mm -hmm. He's quoted it all. Then as he goes on and on and on, he's not staying faithful to it. He goes to bring the uh, history Okay, selective history. So you see, it's not complete. He chooses the ones that reinforce his opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not like a, a strict science. Though law is a science, but that's a social science. It's not like the uh, this fiscal sciences where you say, okay, um, one molecule of hydrogen plus two molecules of oxygen will give what? Water. Mm -hmm. No. The law one 
uh, though we say it's a science, it's not as strictly fiscal science as the one I just uh, described, right? Mm -hmm. So yes. their viewpoints and all those things are written in because he says he's doing purposive interpretation. Now, when you read the words, the words are very clear. Who has asked you to go and resort to history and the rest? No, read the first words. They are very, very clear. And so in interpretation, we have the principle that, listen, there's a distinction between undesirable law and then unconstitutional law. If you are saying that what we are faced with is that the court is saying the law is undesirable. But be careful, the same Supreme Court, you hear Kluge, Datiban, and even from the 1979, you hear Fatal versus Minister of Interior, mm -hmm. they make it clear. The fact that law is undesirable doesn't mean you should strike it down. No, if it's very clear, it's clear. Too many Supreme Court decisions. When mm -hmm. the law is clear, just leave it at that. Don't go and resort to esoteric meaning because as Justice Asari Daku wrote, mm -hmm. then he bound himself, entangled himself in so many things that were unnecessary. Look, let's go here. What is difficult about if he was elected mm -hmm. a member of parliament as an independent candidate and joins a political party? What is difficult about this? That's you Article 97.1. Yeah, 97.1. G. Uh, 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 this, uh, yes, G. No, that's H. H. I'm talking about mm -hmm. Isiyama. What is difficult about this? Then you go to our history, and some people, uh, Dr. Gladys Nsowa, who were who, there were people who, in the term of parliament, they, sw they switched, and then nothing happened. Meanwhile, the same Supreme Court has held that when an unconstitutionality goes on for even hundreds of years, it doesn't ripen into constitutionality. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, yes, that's sorry. That could go on to say no. If we allow this thing to stand, then it means that the consequence will not get uh, a representative for the last three months. That's wrong, and that the constitution intended that at all times we should have a representative. That's wrong. It's but we did. They say, oh, uh, excellent. Yeah, you are talking about the same Supreme Court, June uh, 2020. They saw it coming. That. The decision they gave in the uh, Valentine, uh, this in Jache, that Sal, Santo Kofi, uh, Akpafu, Lolobi, and Lipe will not get an MP. They didn't make an exception. Jachi Kwesin. Ah, <laughs> so many examples. But you see, so just as I could go so to say that uh, the constitution intended that we should have a representative, the constituent should have a rep all the time. But that's not true. The same 97, okay? Makes mm. provision for what? Resignation. So is he saying that when a member wants to even resign within the last 90 days because uh, uh, the con con constitution wants the constituents to have an MP throughout, that member cannot resign? It's provided in 97 here that the person mm. can resign. Yes. If the person mm. absents himself for more than 15 sittings, he can be removed, okay? And then mm -hmm. if he's found guilty of contempt of parliament, these are all there. And oh, so, so the uh, reference you make is what is on the screen there. So on the HS, you make reference to uh, Andrew Shama's case. If the, if the member was elected as an independent candidate and subsequently joins a political party. Yes. That's yes. Thank 97 you. 97H. In Excellent. the reasoning of the Supreme Court, such uh -huh. decisions, the consequences of it, to the extent that the person's decision is of a matter of a subsequent election, mm -hmm. an election that is in the future and not of the now, mm -hmm. the consequences of it cannot be suffered in the parliament of the moment. And that if the person's decision affects the ninth parliament, then the consequences of it should then be applied in the ninth parliament. But mm -hmm. if you look at the, this, the speaker's reasoning, and, 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 and Council Matik Bebu, yeah. The speaker says, if the consequence of violating Article 97 is of futuristic you know, implication, then there will be really no punitive measure. Because yeah. if Andre Siama eventually wins mm -hmm. the 2024 election mm -hmm. in Formina, mm -hmm. he's going to serve with the NPP. Yeah. He, he, he wouldn't at the time violated this 97. Thank you. And if 
Cynthia Morrison wins mm -hmm. as an independent candidate. He wouldn't obviously, or she wouldn't also be serving as an MPP MP. Mm -hmm. So is it the case that now when they win as independent candidate, they cannot then decide to do business with the MPP? Thank you. Okay, so let me continue. So, good. Uh -huh. Look at what Justice Aridaku wrote. He says that, uh, for the majority, he says the framers of the constitution intended constituents to have uninterrupted representation throughout the parliamentary term. And any interpretation that undermines continuous constituent uh, representation during, during a parliament's term is constitutionally untenable. That's false. That's not what the framers intended. 97 mm -hmm. itself has provided that MPs can resign and MP can be what? Expelled from parliament, mm -hmm. etc. So this statement, this cannot be correct. That's what I said. You see, when you, the situation is not ripe and you force it, you have to explain, ah, then that's what the young people now in this call, you go explain tire, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, look at it. You said the framers intended that they should have uninterrupted uh, representation throughout. It's not true. It's not born out by 97. It's not born out. Yes, you would. Mm -hmm. But there are exceptions. If you fall foul of the law, you'll be removed. And so if you are removed and Article 1-1, uh, what do you call it, uh, 2, clause 5 or 6, says that 90 days to an election, uh, if there is a vacancy, no further what? By election. Mm -hmm. So this is not true. That's why I said that what we have here is a situation where you've given power to somebody, and that's the person's prerogative. Uh -huh, that's all. But as for explaining and trying to justify, I'm clear that I'm not persuaded. Look, so uh, it says that, look, look at the 112 I mentioned, 6. It says, notwithstanding clause 5 of this article, mm -hmm. a by-election shall not be held within three months before the holding of a general election. So will you strike this one too down? The top, mm. you see the explanation, the judgment was labored. The majority judgment, it was labored, was struggling. I said, no, 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 no. So the thing is very clear. So let me mm. land on this point. It's very clear. And so you see why then um, people, lawyers have raised arguments that this decision takes us back to the powers of the chief justice to empanel. Because doesn't it strike you that the senior most judges were left out you see, uh, Mr. Ansari made that argument the last time. Bafu mm -hmm. who is the most senior? Experience. Yes, experience. Uh -huh. he is left out. Puama, next, left out. But is that the only case? Ah, is that the only case? What are you saying? What, what, ah, what are you saying? You see, I say, well, I say, well. <laughs> no, no, let, 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 cancel, <laughs> land, because yes. I need to. You see it. So, HPC Prepe wrote an article uh, right in the 90s. He saw it coming that, hey, this powers of chief justice to empanel, it can lead to an overthrow of the constitutional, just like the way Chachich Kata is put it. Yes, because the chief justice will sit there and look and see that those who think otherwise, okay, I will not empanel you. And so we'll select, devil selection, select those that will say yes. Yes, that's right. This is an analysis. Ah, you look and choose the ones that will go in your line. Ah, is, do you have a problem with it? Ah, as if we're... But, but, but it, 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 so this ruling, this, this ah, ruling... What? Is, it, ah, it, as if we're... Are you saying that no, 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 Puama no, is no, not senior no, to even see, chief justice herself? Bafu Boni is not senior to chief justice. That's what we call. So you choose the ones that will follow your line. Ah. What basis? But the... Ah. So, cancel. And you want us to go on and on, so, right? So, so that's the, the, the point is, this ruling yes. sought to, to address a yes. particular situation. Yes. Has it corrected this error so-called, or it has set a precedence for, for more errors to be committed? No, it hasn't. It hasn't corrected the error so-called. It's just that this is the use of force. And I see it as use of force. I have power. And this is what I've said. And because the Constitution says we should obey, then that must be law. But I don't think it's been corrected because you are going to give more problems. Look, when you read through at the majority decision, eh, as you're talking, look at Yasa Saridako. He just says, filing a uh, nomination to contest in a future election eh, is mm -hmm. futuristic, right? Yes. He hasn't addressed the point that 
before you can file nomination to contest in MPP, you must first join the party. I say, what? Is that not true? So did the CMA join your party before he filed or not? Did he join? Did the CMA join yeah, MPP? I respond to it. Yes, uh, I respond to it. Uh, mm -hmm. Did he join? This one's simple. No, no, I'm no, asking you to answer. I respond to you. Don't no, worry. I'm just asking you, for no, clarification. No, 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 you go ahead. I'll oh, respond to you. No, I'm not worry. saying that I've disagree. Written, I've written everything. No, no, no. I, I say, I've not asked you to disagree. Mm -hmm. I'm just asking that. Can you confirm that a CMA joined MPP in order to be able to file on the ticket of MPP? You go ahead. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Kato, you make, make, you make your point. Oh, so you, you, no, but me okay. and you from way yeah, back, I today know, just Kato, give me small information. Know, but, you mean, don't want some, to. Some of the words that you are using Kato, is, is surprising. Which, which, Kato, 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 so because of that, you will not point. answer. <laughs> Kato, uh, Kato, you but, conclude on your point. I will still ask the uh, this question. This law, uh, <laughs> this law, uh -huh. so you mm. see, the thing is, and that brings me to the other point. I'm sure the Supreme Court themselves, if they had seen that Ghana is changed and that will be scrutinizing the decision and the whole process itself, mm -hmm. maybe they wouldn't have taken that line. Because now we are left with, you know that, like they say, with every dark cloud, there's a silver lining. You see that the decision has now given us an opportunity to drive home our point that Article 144, appointment of Supreme Court judges and other judges of the superior courts, it's no longer fit for purpose because it has made our constitution buy one, get one free. No separation of powers. The judiciary is under the executive. That's why our constitution is. The judiciary is, uh, is under the executive. Ekufado's mm -hmm. word is law, right? Uh -huh. So, you know, they've done this and it's given us opportunity to state clearly that so we'll not accept such a constitution because it's inimical to our development. You don't have judicial independence. So the bottom line is that this thing, uh, what we are saying is that what the Supreme Court is written, that is their opinion. And like we always say, you won't find two lawyers agree. But because we've agreed under the Constitution, there is a Supreme Court that has the final word on the meaning of the Constitution. Uh, to that extent, we agree. But we can also analyze and analyze for them to see that, no, that this, the decision is not good for our democracy. Because, you see, as they go on, then he tries to attack even the whip system. They want to liberate the MPs, etc. But there is Act 300, where, look, under Act 300, as you go, I'll read it. The party, okay, can discipline a, 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 this, a, a member, right, of the, the, their party. And write to Parliament that, listen, we've expelled this person from our party. So remove him. Meanwhile, you've not struck down Act 300. And then... You, you say so many things, indirectly say Act 300 is not law or what. Me, I just don't understand. This, this decision there, mm -mm. 